Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we've got a short box of slabs, probably 20 or so to go through. Uh, most of these came from Comic Link. Um, I think their July auction stuff that I won from there. Uh, of course, a couple eBay things too. Um, and I think one other auction company as well. Uh, I've also got a couple pages of original art I think I've shown before, but I'm, uh, I've decided to sell them, so also included in this video at the end. First up we have Action Comics 382. This is from the uh, John Fantuccio collection. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name. Um, it's 9.4 white pages, Action Comics 382. Super sharp copy. Back cover. Most of these I'm just gonna leave in the bags. Uh, so, sorry for the glare. Up next is Amazing Spider-Man number 91. This is 9.0 with white pages. Nice copy, good colors. After that we have a CBCS book. I think I might have another one or two of these. Uh, Avengers number five. Nice early book here, early Marvel, Silver Age. Here is a super high grade book, Avengers 79, 1970, it's a 9.6. And this also has one of those CVA stickers, um, which means it has you know exceptional eye appeal. I don't even know if this company still operates anymore or if this is like an old book that they did. Um, if you don't know what this is, basically uh, coin grading companies kind of have uh, a system where you can actually have your coin graded again um, and even when it's already in like a holder so basically it can get like a, a plus sticker or, or some some sort of sticker basically confirming the grade or saying that you know it actually looks like nicer than this grade um, so they try to do that with comics but comics are kind of a different animal because you know you're you're grading on more than just the cover um, whereas a coin you can usually see all aspects even when it's in a case um, but with the comic, you have to check a lot more. So it's basically just like an eye appeal sticker. Um, I don't see those too often, and I mainly just see it through comic links. So I don't think it really increases the value at all. But, but anyways, yeah, this book has great eye appeal for a 9.6. But, you know, if you're already at 9.6, that's kind of expected. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways. Up next, we have first uh, appearance of the new Teen Titans. Raiden, Cyborg, Starfire, the works. It's a mid-high grade copy, 7.5. Um, I haven't watched the new Teen Titans show. Don't know if it's any good or not. So, anyways. Next up, we have a couple Fantastic Fours. Number 15, 6.0. First appearance of the Mad Thinker. An awesome android. I remember I had a, a Hero Clicks, if you ever played that game, figure of this guy. It was kind of weird, but. Then we have uh, first Black Bolt. FF number 46. Books is 6.5. Uh, this book's gone down in value a lot uh, over the past couple years, I think, because of the failure of the TV show or some other properties. Or I think Marvel trash scrapped the movie idea for this, so it's still a good key book, though, and Black Bolt's a cool character. Um, at one point, I had like a 9.0, um, and I think those were selling for like six to 800 but probably a lot less now. Uh, up next... Fantastic Four number 52. Uh, this one I bought on eBay actually, but I didn't even have to pay for it because I accumulated like 400 something dollars of eBay bucks. And I was kind of running out of time to spend them before they expired. So I sold this for cheap on eBay, uh, well lower than GPA. So I figured I'd just use my bucks on this book. So 
Yeah, basically kind of like a free book. So if you haven't signed up for the eBay Books program, definitely do that. You get like, I think it used to be 2% cash back. It might be 1% now on purchases, but they usually have like specials where it's, oh, today only 8% or something. Um, let's see, a couple new Mutants 98s here. First Deadpool, of course, 9.4 and a 7.5. Those books have kind of been dropping too since the last Deadpool movie came out. Uh, after that, we have a really cool cover. Um, this is probably my favorite book of the bunch that you'll be seeing today. I'll take this one out of the bag. Um, I do, I think I showed you guys a while back. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I have another one of these, maybe a little bit better than this one. Um, just a really awesome LB Cole romance cover. Just beautiful colors. Kind of a cool, you know, ring around those two. Just these popular teenagers. This series has a lot of classic LB Cole covers. So, that's a nice book. I think I paid in the 400 something range. Probably will look to sell it for a bit more than that. Uh, up next, I bought these from an auction company they don't have the sticker. They had a sticker, but I, I took it off and I used Goo Gone. Um, if you don't know what that is, check it out. It's really good for getting rid of like the Comic Link sticker residue. Um, but on these new slabs, it kind of leaves like a residue. I don't know if you can see it, but no matter how many times I've wiped, tried to wipe it off, it just kind of like still not wet, but just, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, back to the book. Um, I forgot the name of the auction company, Al Durfer or something like that. Anyways, they had uh, an auction with some, a couple key books. I think their biggest book might have been like a Hulk 1 3.0. Um, I bid on a lot of stuff, but like most uh, like smaller auction companies that have like a live event in person, their, their sales usually actually end up doing very well um, for the sellers. And they also usually have a buyer's premium. So, you know, I'll usually walk away with one or two lots from those type of auctions. Um, but I was happy to get these two. Uh, United States, States Marines. Let me show you the labels. Number two and number three. Uh, classic war covers here. These books are both from World War II period. Um, so, of course, you have the propaganda here. Um, Anti-Japanese sort of sentiment at the time, you know, so uh, This one's probably a little more well-known cover um, It's definitely picked up a lot in value over the past couple years I remember I used to have one and I was trying to sell it, but it sat for a long time, but I think people are starting to recognize um, Recognize these two a little bit more So yeah, a couple classic covers. I got both of these in one lot. I think I paid between three to four hundred bucks and um, yeah, hopefully this, I think this one's worth at least three to 400 by itself. It's kind of annoying. They, they put it in one of these giant size like magazine cases too, but you know, I guess you gotta do that sometimes because you can kind of see it would have been too big for one of the other ones. Okay, just four books left. Um, I think they, yeah, they're all ECs. Uh, two copies of Weird Science Fantasy 26. Nothing too special about this one, just got good deals on them. Well, this is a special issue. <laughs> uh, Weird Fantasy number 20, this is another CBCS book. Um, slightly higher grade copy, it's a 7.0. Has some nice pinks on the cover. They're not you know, as, as crisp as fresh off the press, because you can kind of tell they're a little bit faded. Um, I've seen this this book with uh, just pinks that just pop out at you. This one's a little bit duller, but it's a nice copy though. And last book for today, um, and then we'll look at some art real quick. Weird Science number 22. Uh, this is a really cool cover, Wally Wood. And it's only 4.5. Okay, uh, real quick. Let's start off with, I think these two pieces you've probably already seen. 
an old, older video. Uh, this is Detective Comics number 519, uh, page 16. It's uh, Don Newton pencils. Um, I think somebody else did the inking or something, though. I forgot his name. But it's cool. It's got Batman in this panel. Um, it's about 10 by 15 inches, so I can't get the full thing in this frame. But then uh, I think that's Captain Cold or Mr. Freeze. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the villain in this issue or not, but um, pretty nice page with a wonderful little Batman panel there. Uh, up next is a more modern comic. It is uh, Green Lantern's New Guardians. This is a Tyler Kirkham piece from issue number four. Uh, I never read this storyline, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it's got a lot of detail. And I've probably had this for three or four years now. I've got a lot of other pages from um, Tyler. I like his work. Um, and Ethan Van Skyver, is that how you say his name? I think I've got one or two pages from him. So yeah, that's that. And the last page, which I don't think I've shown this one before, and this one's a little bit bigger because it's an older book. It's actually like on this piece of cardboard. Um, Actually, I probably should have grabbed the book for this. I have it upstairs. Um, it's from Monster Number no. 2, which is a pre-code horror sci-fi book. Uh, or pre-code horror book from Fiction House. I think it was published in 1953 or early 50s. Um, yeah, this is a cool story. I forgot the... Uh, I forgot the name of the story off the top of my head, but... Nice little panels here. Let me scoot it down. I'm not going to be able to get it centered, but... Good panel of a scared lady there. And some other work down there. A little torture panel there. There was somebody's price tag of $35. Um, I bought this one on eBay, I think, early 2019, late 2018. Uh, paid around $240, $250 for it. Um, the seller included some provenance. I think he got it from a seller that got it from Heritage. Um, and then of course, who knows how long that guy had it. There's the $35 price, $35 price tag. Um, so you can actually see the Heritage sale is like, I think 180 or so. So yeah, pretty cool page. You know, it's, it's huge if I compare it to the other ones. Um, well, it's not like crazy big. But there you go. Uh, sorry, Can't get the camera all the way out. But anyways, from a page from uh, 1953 for pre-code stuff, I think that's pretty cool to own. Um, but yeah, I'm probably gonna look to sell it here pretty soon. So anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.